Hey everyone, the name is Eric Dor and today's video is dedicated to discussing zombies. By the way, this zombie effect is just absolutely brutal. Listen to it. Okay, maybe back to topic. I love zombie movies, and to me zombies are the perfect metaphor for a person in the autopilot, a person blindly following the herd. Perhaps you found yourself looking at those zombies around you, the people simply moving around, simply imitating one another, never taking any personal initiative, never showing any personal purpose or passion, never showing any semblance of thinking about what's right and wrong, simply doing what other people tell them. A lot of us may be tempted to fall into the zombie mentality, and why are we tempted? What is it that draws us to become like this? What makes us go and become one with the herd? And now, we keep thinking that zombies are sensors, but no, no, that's not true at all. Through this, the zombie can be a disillusioned intuitive type. And the zombie can also be a disillusioned sensing type, so... The question of if you are a zombie or not comes down to what is it that gives you energy? What is it that you would do if you had the passion or energy to do it? What would you do if you had energy? What would you do if you wanted energy? What would give you energy that doesn't give you energy at the moment? Perhaps you are an intuitive following the crowd right now, but you might not be in the future. You might find ways to find energy in being an original. There are, of course, a few simple reasons. The autopilot is alluring to anyone who needs more stability in their life. The autopilot or the zombie state is alluring to anyone who wants a heightened sense of control over their life. The zombie state is for anyone who is in a state of, or a mindset where the world or where their goals or where their passions simply seem overwhelming or impossible. The person that decides that their goal or their passion or what they think is right is impossible is at high risk of falling into the autopilot state. That tends to be the second step. The first uh, that happens is that realization that, oh, I'm not going to be able to make it or my passion won't work or nobody will care or nobody won't will want to join me or help me, it won't go. And so, in giving up, in yielding, we become one with the herd. We do what everyone else wants, we do what everyone else does. We submit to the unconscious beliefs we have about other people. And other people, of course, submit to the unconscious beliefs they have of us. So the zombie is in this amazing stage. You can really think of it like something amazing. Because all zombies walking around are mimicking one another. And doing what everyone else around them appears to think is right. But everyone in that herd tends to be a zombie themselves. So everyone is imitating everybody. So what is the original? What is it that drives a zombie to move forward? What is it that makes them do? What is it that makes them act? What is it <laughs> that makes them uh, want what they want? Um, how do we understand this from a logical perspective? Well, the truth is uh, to be ruled by the unconscious mass of people is quite interesting because there is no such thing as the unconscious mass expectation. The unconscious mass expectation is all in our head. It's what we think other people think we want. It's what we think that other people expect of us, what other people want from us. So the herd mentality is uh, based on something that is a complete illusion. Everyone has it in their head, this common sense version of reality, this common sense version of what's right and wrong. The herd's version of right and wrong is based on something that doesn't exist, It's no, since everyone is just copying it from one another. It's just based on what currently is. It's just based on, well, what currently happens to be the most likely thing. <laughs> I find that when you're dealing with zombies or people in the autopilot, what you will notice most strikingly about them is that Nobody of them knows what is right or wrong. Nobody of them has a clue about what's right or wrong. Nobody has a clue what decision to make in a situation. 
So everyone is looking to one, each other, and everyone's going, so can someone tell us what we should do? Can someone give us some drive forward? Can someone... And it becomes like this uh, sense where everyone starts beginning to say something. Yeah, I think we should. And everyone's delaying it because they hope someone else will f figure it out. And they look and they make the simplest decision possible. Everything to the zombie is based on simplicity. It's based on energy conservation. It's based on conserving and reducing the amount of power you need to use at all points. The zombie wants to avoid exerting any form of energy. The zombie wants to avoid doing anything that requires any form of power. So the pub they go to is the first they see. The thing they pick out to buy in the grocery store is the first thing they do. The thing they pick out is the thing they usually pick out. Because the thing they usually pick out is already there. They don't have to think about it. They don't have to think about it. It's just chosen for them. And the zombies will find that all decisions are made for them. The grocery stores set up the stores to decide what you should buy. The grocery stores tell you what you want or what you should want. Uh, the advertisements around you tell you what you should want. And this is the thing. I hear a lot of people saying, oh, advertisements don't affect me. I'm not impacted by such things. But zombies are. Zombies look at advertisements and they become affected by it. Oh, so someone wants me to pick that, then I will pick that, I guess. And uh, they are simply driven on by other people's inspiration and amusement and other people's passion. So a skilled salesman that seems enthusiastic, that seems passionate about what they say, will convince them regardless of what they say, regardless of if it's right or wrong. The mu the why what does it mean that a zombie wants brains? What is this a metaphor of if you think about it? I believe that the brain metaphor is a metaphor for wanting energy and for wanting passion. Because the zombie is cut off from their own sense of passion and their own sense of motivation, they aren't pursuing what they love, and because they don't pursue what they love, they get no fulfillment for what they do, so they get no power to do anything. They only do what uh, they, I mean, they don't do what they find fun. They do, don't do what they find thrilling. They don't have any hobbies or passions. So they don't get any energy. So the zombie is starved of energy and passion and power. Of course, that's why the zombie is so allured by people that seem to have energy and power, the people that seem to be the most alive, the people that seem to be the most inspiring, the people that seem to have the most passion. Zombies are drawn to people with a strong sense of passion, charisma, and the motivation. They are drawn to the muses, the people who have hobbies, the people who have passions, the people who have lots of things they love. The zombies crave to be around these people, to get their energy, to get their motivation via proximity. Instead of getting power or energy from what you do, from what you love, you can get it from other people's passions, from other people's loves. And so the zombie is constantly allured by the muse. The muse as a character that is slightly reckless, slightly turbulent, slightly manic, the muse as the person that lacks a sense of control or that seems a little out of touch with society and with practical matters. The muse and the zombie are drawn to one another because the muse appears to have all this energy and passion, but they have no sense of control and no sense of direction. The zombie, however, has a strong sense of direction, do what everyone else wants, and a strong sense of uh, stability, do whatever I usually do. Do whatever is easy. And so, these two tend to complement or stabilize one another. The muse tends to give the zombie power and energy, while the zombie tends to give the muse stability and direction. And there is a tug of war here, an important tug of war, in the sense that the muse will of course feel that the zombie is uh, always... Uh, in many ways, um, killing their energy and their passion by controlling them or narrowing them down or boxing them in or limiting them from pursuing what they want. And the zombie is going to feel 
that the muse is constantly pushing them to care about things they don't care about, to do things they don't uh, want to do, to be to pay attention to things they rather not think about. The zombie is constantly trying to sweep problems that they know are problems under the rug. It's not so that the zombie doesn't care, it's that the zombie doesn't want to care. It's that the zombie avoids to care. It's the zombie sweeps under the rug to avoid, to deal with issues and problems that they know are important or necessary. This goes for so many things. It can apply to climate change, it can apply to following your passion, becoming a musician, to doing what you love. The zombie is, has a repressed passion. And zombie characters like Joseph Gordon-Lewitt in 500 Days of Summer does a great job of portraying how the muse impacts them. The muse makes us feel this huge rush of energy that we had never felt in such a long time. The muse makes us believe we can do anything we set out to. Now the thing about the zombie and the muse dynamic that is so interesting is that both tend to look at each other with such frustration in a way. The muse looks at the zombie of course as a blind person that doesn't see how important it is that we act and make a difference. The zombie looks at the muse as this kind of uh, crazy activist, this person that acts blindly and recklessly towards something that doesn't even matter, towards something that isn't even a problem to begin with. Now it might be said that if 500 Days of Summer was shot from Zoe's perspective, perhaps she would have been the one that saw him as her muse. And that's the important thing about archetypes. Archetypes are in many ways relative to other people. And the archetypes make us see other people a little less realistically. The archetypes show that we see other people through our own personal perspectives. Often what we believe about other people says a lot about what we want to believe about ourselves. And uh, we can all fall into the zombie mentality from time to time, but not all of us fall into or remain in this thing for a long time. Zombies can be, or are at risk of, falling under a long-term grip of this mentality. And uh, it's important here to recognize that you become a zombie because you've felt a call to action, but you've ignored it many times, so many times that they, you either stopped listening to it or you stopped, started pretending it didn't exist at all. And um, that's also why zombies can also find muses slightly threatening, because muses seem to follow that call. Muses tend to make you aware of that call. Muses tend to bring that call up in you and you don't want to listen and you don't want to care and you don't want to think about it, even if you know it's right, even if you know it's important. And it is important. And that's also why what zombies need is to get back in touch with their passion and with their inner passion, not passion of other people. The muse's passion is not necessarily your passion. What the muse loves, what the muse cares about, you don't necessarily care about. So the important thing as a zombie is, what do you care about? What matters to you? What is it that you want to do, that you have been resisting doing, that you need to do? Because you need to do it, even if it feels, feels impossible, even if it feels too overwhelming, or even if it feels scary to do it, you need to do it. And guess why? Because... If you don't do it, you won't have any energy, you won't have any power, and you're in this power, you're in this mentality, this autopilot zombie mentality, because you want to conserve power, because you want to save energy. But you're losing energy because you're not pursuing the things that give you energy. Energy is not something you have a limited amount of, it's something that exists everywhere around you, as long as you follow it, and as long as you become aware of it and pursue it. Power is not something you have a finite amount of, it's something that exists everywhere around you. As long as you know what it is that gives you power, what it is that gives you energy and fulfillment, that's what you need to do to get energy and power. So don't worry of not having enough energy or not having enough power. <laughs> You'll get it if you start following, listening to your personal call to action. Now the thing is, that we all have areas where we are more prone to being like zombies. The NFs are going to be zombies in areas that require sensing and thinking. And the sensors and thinkers are going to be zombies in areas that require intuition and feeling. So there is, a, uh, there is an interplay here that is fascinating.
if you take the archetype test and discover that you are a zombie, you might realize that, well, perhaps I'm not accessing my intuition or my feeling as much as I should as an NF. Or perhaps I'm not accessing my intuition and thinking as much as I should as an ENTP. And then the question is, how can I get more motivation? How can I get more energy? How can I get in touch with my intuition and with my thinking? If you want to find out your personality type and your subtype and what archetypes that tend to be the strongest in you, then I suggest sending me a message and I will be happy to help out in any way I can. So thank you all for watching and I hope to see you in the next video.